Hello everyone, my name is Cap and welcome back to Cap Tech. Today I want to talk to you guys about Sea Cleaner from Piriform. Now this is by far the most popular, most downloaded file cleaning software that's on the internet. It's boasting of more than 2 billion downloads total. Now for starters, this is not a paid promotion. They don't know I'm actually doing this. This is just a review that I'm doing here. And I'm doing all of this in version 5.24 with a build 5.841, just in case later on down the road they've changed a few things. And I'm doing this in Windows 7. This software is available for free from anywhere from Windows XP all the way to Windows 10. There is a paid version, but the only real difference between that is, is you can set up like scheduled updates and scheduled cleaning. It's just kind of the additional stuff to run in the background automatically, but all the functionality is still the same. So the free version works just fine. So let me walk you guys through on how to install this and how to use the software. Installation is pretty simple. You just download the executable out to your desktop and run it like you would any other installer, allow it to run, and this will bring you to the customization options during the actual install. It'll let you go through and you can do a basic install or you can go through and customize it if you want to change some of the other options here. I personally go through and uncheck pretty much every single one of these because they're not ones I normally use. But of course it's up to you to decide if you want to leave those or not. It's basically just whether you want shortcuts. If you want to be able to put it in the recycle bin context menu which is when you right click it it pops up. You can have it automatically check for updates in the background it means it's going to have a scheduled service to run to make sure that it's got the most updated version and then intelligent cookie scan i talked about later more if you want to go in and change so where it's located or if you want to make it so only certain users can use it and just let it go through and do its install then it'll bring it up let you know hey everything's good to go you're done if you want to re review the release notes you can uh, and then just click it to run the actual software once you've completed the install, it's going to take you to the main part of the interface for here. This is the cleaner side of it. This is where it will go through and allow you to select and deselect all the different aspects of the system, your different browsers. You can go into your applications, choose which one specifically, what you want to have cleaned on here. You can check and uncheck all the way down. You can see there's a ton of different options they have on here. Um, but one of the first things I want you to do is to go down to your options and under the advanced tab. By default, when you very first install this, this checkbox up here at the top is selected. It says only delete files in the Windows 10 folders older than 24 hours, meaning that anything done in the last day isn't in there. By default, that's not a bad thing to leave for most people, but it also doesn't take into account anything you may have done today. And oftentimes, if you're trying to run a computer clean or a scan on your computer, it's because something may or may not be working like it's supposed to and so by making it unchecked it'll go through and check for everything that's actually done today and then under the monitoring section right here make sure you uncheck this if it is enabled by default I know there's some versions down here where you can see the uh, different check boxes here for enabled system monitoring and when you do that it puts a icon down here in the system tray that runs every single time you turn your computer on I absolutely despise programs that have this as an option because it's not necessary. So I always just make sure to tell users if you're going to be using this program to uncheck the system monitoring here, it doesn't need to run at startup and all that other stuff. This is a good for just an on-demand cleaning. So after you have everything selected here at the very first, you'll go through and click on your analyze button and it'll go through and do a full scan in your system. And depending on how long it's been since you've done this kind of clean, it can take a quite a while to go through depending on the size of your system. After it's finished doing its scan, it'll bring you to the analysis complete section here to tell you how long it took to run and how much total space can be cleaned up by removing all the internet junk files here. As you can see, I've got 2.6 thousand megabytes of information that's a little over two and a half gigs worth of stuff and as you can see most of the time is temporary internet files internet cache settings these files can take up a whole lot of space on your computer and they're just not good to have there so you'll go through and you run the cleaning and let it go ahead and finish complete doing what it's doing here and then it'll let you know when it's done and you've just removed a big ton of files in here. I do this on a probably about a monthly basis on my computer and you can see even then it builds up quite a bit of files. Now I'm a little bit more active on the computer than probably the average user so your settings and your viewings and stuff will be a little bit different. But on to the next section. Over here underneath cleaner you can see where you have the option to go through and scan for issues within the registry. I will throw a disclaimer out there that this is something dangerous to do if you don't know what you're doing. You can let it go through and do a full scan just like the normal cleaner that it has here, but it scans the Windows registry for problems you have. And a lot of times what you're going to have is unused file extensions or ActiveX issues and stuff. And this is basically where system files no longer match up with where they were originally put in here or it was a temporary thing was installed 
or there was a shortcut somewhere that didn't work out. And so this allows you to go through and clean up your registry. So if you're going to do this and you go through and fix selected issues, then you can go through and fix just one. You can scroll through them one at a time if you want to manually go through and do there. And I have it turned off, but by default it will ask you if you want to back up your registry settings. And definitely do that before you run any kind of cleanings here. But on to the next section, under tools, this will give you a whole lot of other things that you can do within your system. There's a lot of very useful things in CCleaner that are free to have, like the uninstall thing. If you don't know how to uninstall software in your computer, this will definitely show you everything that's installed on your computer, when it was installed, what version you have, who put it on there, and this will allow you to go through and select what you want to and either repair it if it's broken, and it gives you the option to, or you can uninstall it. Now underneath the startup, now this is a very important key that I, uh, an important feature that I use often. And this is the startup here. And this is where you can go through and enable and disable things running at startup on your computer that don't necessarily need to be there. Now anything under the Windows section here, this is not going to be anything that's vital to Windows actually functioning properly. This is just stuff that runs within Windows itself. And if you went through and disabled everything here, your computer would still boot up by, it would still boot up just fine without any additional problems so you don't have anything to fear by unselecting anything here. But anything you have here that you don't want it enabled, you can just click on it and choose disable on the right side and it'll gray it out. And you can see where it says enabled yes or no over on the left side. And then the next time you boot your computer up, this will keep it from running that time too. The next tab over here is the scheduled tasks tab. Now this is another one to keep a good eye on because you never know what kind of software you have on your computer that's going to try and install something to run as a scheduled task to try and run an update. This is one of the things that bugs me about CCleaner is it likes to try and put in this skip UAC thing in here. It's a scheduled task. It's going to run. I don't even know how often it runs on here because it doesn't say in this specific thing. But it's just one of those things that I don't necessarily want running on my computer. And oftentimes if you have the... Uh, active monitoring that shows up in your system tray down here this is where it'll show up there and you can delete it as well now adobe and google products are also really bad about installing software that's going to run in the background as a scheduled task in here trying to check for updates so although it does check for scheduled security updates on there it's good to find is that they'll put multiple entries in there and so you have it checking for updates multiple times a day and to me that's just not necessary and then the context menu, your context menu is when you right click something. These are the different options that come up so that you can choose whether or not you want it to be there. See if you went through and right clicked on your desktop onto an actual file, then you would see a lot of the options that you see there. And so this is where you can enable or disable those. Most time I would say just leave these alone unless your menu is just completely full of stuff you don't use. Now down on the next one here, this is the browser plugin section where you can go through and examine all of the different plugins running on all of your browsers when you first open them up. And Explorer, Firefox, Google, Chrome, these are the three that are on there by default. And you can see I have quite a few things disabled because these aren't things I actually use. Same thing in Firefox and Chrome. I go through and can disable and enable the things that I actually do use on a regular basis. Because just like any other program, when you have a ton of stuff installed that's loading up every time you open it that you don't use, it just makes it take longer to run. So this gives you a pretty good option to go through and say, okay, well, I'm not using Skype at all. So I'll make sure and just go through and delete that and uninstall it. And I'm not using the storage online or anything like that. So you can go through and just uh, disable that as well. Disk Analyzer, this one is a little bit uh, complicated to use. I wouldn't recommend using this for the uh, novice user here. This will go through and analyze your entire hard drive and it can take a while. And what it does is it goes through and it lets you know what kind of files are taking up the most amount of space on your computer. Duplicate Finder is a good way to go through your entire system and see if it can find files that are saved in two or three different places and let you know if you have duplicates of those because they're having a ton of the exact same file saved in multiple locations unless you have it as a backup of course but having just the same document saved in your my documents and then under this folder and under that folder it just takes up space and it's not necessarily a good thing to have there. 
System Restore brings up the additional System Restore checkpoints that Windows has created when things are installed, and you can go through and remove those if you have a ton of them. I would highly recommend just leaving this system section alone here. It's not necessary. Same thing with Drive Wiper. This is just a really high-end tool that they put on here. I wouldn't recommend going through here unless you know what you're doing because you can end up wiping out a whole lot of hard drive space like this entire drive all data will be erased if you don't know what you're doing you click on the accident you can go through and wipe out a whole lot of data and then uh, you can go back under the options they have here and one of the things that the system likes to try and do with uh, C cleaners under the cookies section is you can have it go through and try and find a bunch of cookies to keep so if there's a lot of websites you routinely visit you can add cookies that you're going to routinely see those sites pop up over and over again so that they don't get deleted when you clean them out because you get tons and tons and tons of cookies saved on your system just from basic usage and then there's a bunch of other different option stuff you have down here if you want to include them so it searches in a, a little bit more maybe a different hard drive or something you can exclude folders and files if you don't want it searching for those you can authorize only certain users to use it at certain times and then there's some different options you have here. But again, this is all about the advanced level stuff. For the basic user, just the normal, leave everything the way as it was when you installed it, should be good enough to go. So that wraps up my review of CCleaner. This is probably the longest video I've done on this channel yet, but there was a whole lot of information to cover because this is a really robust software that I highly recommend to people. Uh, if you have any questions, do drop them in the comment section down below, and I'll happily answer them as quick as I can. And again, the download link for this is going to be in the video description, so if you need to go check it out. And, you know, if you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button down there. And I know this one's a really long one, so hopefully you stuck around with me for this long. And uh, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you guys so much for your support. You have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you later.